Yeah. Hello, 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 hello. Let's see what I'm at now. Let's pull this down a wee bit. A bit more. We can see, we can see. Hi Philippa! <laughs> I swapped boards hoping that it would take this um, strip of light away. I'll move it to there and I'll just keep to the bottom of it, I think. Because it's annoying. Hi Andrine! Hi Dee! I don't seem to be in the right position. Hang five, let me see if I can... No, it doesn't seem to be uh, moving much far away. Never mind, never mind. Hi, Pam. I, don't, I just, oh, that really annoys me, that strip of light. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Christine. Shall I take this away, I wonder? Let's have a look and see what happens when I do. Yeah, maybe that's better. Maybe that's the way to go. Then we don't get so much of an annoyance with the light. It kind of really bugs me, I guess you realise that. I swapped my craft room round. It used to be over by the window, so I either got a strip of light from the overhead light or I got the light coming through from the from the actual window itself. You couldn't you can't win really. Hi Elizabeth, hi Penny. Right, okay, so while people are joining, I shall run through. This is the card we're making. I think you've all seen it. Um, I've, I've put it up I think a few times so we will be using the um, heartfelt sunflower so I shall take that one out because I need that one now so that's that one we will also be using Philippa's butterfly um, the large one Oh no, I'm using that on the second set, sorry. Um, sorry, it's this one I'm using. Um, the Happy Birthday Sentiments. It's the Sentiment Medley and I'm using this big one, the second one from the bottom. Okay, so I shall remove that because I'll need that. Um, I'm hoping, I've got a lot of it prepped already. Um, so I'm hoping, <clears throat> excuse me, to be able to get two done because if on guest was saying the other day that she has problems doing the splats and stuff so i thought well i'll prep a really quick easy one and uh and, and i'll do that one as well if i can get the two of them done so i'll also be using julie's dinky circles the foliage dye only you could use the stamps if you wish but i'm just using the dye from the fresh florals I know, I use mine all the time. And the dragonflies, they're my favourite things. Um, I, I really love butterflies. And I'm also using uh, this one, this scalloped one, from the frames, banners and circles and layers die. I can move them now. Give myself a bit of space. Oh, why is it pulsing? Ooh, can't win. Right, they're out of the way. Let's see, let's crack on. Okay, now, as you know, I do always get a fair bit of it done in advance because you don't need to see me do every single part of it you do know how to, to do some things yourselves so i'm using dl's tonight so that i'm going to pl plan two cards so hopefully they'll hi gail um <clears throat> hopefully we can uh, just do a little bit with dl's when i first started D dl cards um it used to worry me that there was only such a small space to work in but you know what it challenges you and it kind of makes you think about your composition a little bit more i was going to score it but it's easy enough hi sarah right hi julie so i'm not going to score it i'm just going to fold it back it's easy enough um we're folding this this is very similar to the card i did the other day um I know Brian will be going nuts because I'm using my fingernail, but hey-ho. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Um, so all I've done is folded back the front panel there, okay? 
and I have got some of the layers that we need already cut okay so a DL card um, measurement wise is usually 3.9 by 8.3 I can't be bothered messing about with that so I just do 4 by the length of the A4 you know the that way and that way it makes the measurement so much easier because then obviously when you fold it in half this is 2 this is 4 and it just makes it so much easier and it still fits in a DL envelope so that's good enough for me so mine are always 4 by 8 so uh, yeah I've used Sizzix card um, with a linen feel to it because it was the closest one I could find to the colours that I'm using tonight okay so I'm just going to put these panels on first and what I've done is I've cut them just a little bit smaller uh, you can go down a quarter of an inch if you wish um, you know give yourself a good border around the outside uh, I think I do it just slightly over so I've got a little bit more space when it comes to this only a, a fraction so obviously we need panels make sure you've got your linen upwards so uh, when we fold these cards back each of these panels measures two so this is going to be around about one and three quarters so it's one and three quarters by eight because as I said this is there's nothing been chopped off the length of an A4 for this one so if I put these on put these to one side and then we can carry on and I'll show you what else I've got prepped just for ease and quickness there we go so they're all on so there we go we've just decorated the three panels now for on top of these panels we need a panel of white which we're going to be inking and a panel for each this side as well which we also are going to be inking so I'll keep them because we need those now I've also cut from the <clears throat> layers banners and circle dies I've cut out two in the same cardstock okay again love those those details around the outside and I've also used the scallop circles this time and uh, I've got one for that one and one for that one so we can actually glue those on because they're just flat matte layers for this because what we're going to do is put things on top of them it seems such a shame to cover up them stitches but but that gives a nice pretty edge around it so on these go and they can sit to one side and glue properly while we crack on so has anybody had rain today oh my goodness I, four o'clock this morning the rain woke me up the noise is that loud it was ridiculous so those two are done they can go up there out the way that can go out the way and what I have also done is cut like I said using um, the dies just some foliage you can stamp and cut it if you want you know I've used the dies and I've, I've just popped myself some of them out which I will ink up so I'll put them there because they need inking as well and I've also stamped out two and I've heat embossed these I've, I've stamped them in the wow clear slow drying ink pad and I've used white embossing ink I've just got them ready stamped but we are going to cut into them and colour them so they're ready um, so now what we need to do is stamp onto these panels okay I've got ink on that one already that was a good start wasn't it so I'm going to pop the panel on I'm going to get me sunflower stamp love this stamp I'm going to get my anti-static bag and I'm just going to run it across because I've had my mucky paws on it. So I don't want to stamp this all over. I want to probably a near full one there. I'm going to stamp it three times and he's embossed it. So pick it up. No rain in the south. I know, Joe. You always, you always are. I know you're always double booked. You have a thing going on a Monday night, don't you, doll? No worries. I know you catch up. It's on catch up all the time, so it's no stress. But thank you for popping in and telling me anyway. There we go. So I'm going to pop this down. My um, 
embossing pad is a little on the grubby side so I can see whether this has come down proper or not. I'm going to give it another hit. You can't see it obviously but from here I can see that it I'll give it another go. It's not particularly juicy. It gets used an awful lot, does this ink pad. Now that's perfect. So I've got one there now. Um, I'm going to put a half one here. Okay. And I'm going to pray that I've got enough white um, ink. But because the, the paper's white, I could always use clear ink. It'll work just the same. Because when you wipe the ink away off the top of it that we're going to put on it, the white paper will be revealed anyway. So but I suppose you could try this, doing this with black ink, and see what happens. I'm going to go again. Hi, Linda. Oh, did it get hot again? It's it's not too bad here now. It, it's... It's cooled a, a bit. I think sleeping's going to be much easier tonight than it has been for a couple of nights because it's just been ridiculously hot. But we never ever satisfied, are we? I'm not a big fan of the heat. I'd rather have cold. But I'm a nightmare when I go on holiday. <laughs> I was <always> whinging. <laughs> or in Cumbria, if you complain all the time about stuff they call you, it's twining. Stop twining. Just make me laugh the regional things that they say. There we go. One more on that one as well. I think I'm going to have to invest in some re -inker. I've used it all. There we go. We've got three pieces to it. Picking it up with my fingernails is fun. I did have a pokey tool knocking about. Yeah, I think I've cracked it. There we go. I'll just move this off and attempt to heat emboss and hope, fingers crossed guys, that I've got enough. <clears throat> I do use an awful lot of white, I have to say. So I'm going to pop it on. I hope that I've got enough. Oh yeah, I should have. Up well, because I've messed a bit over that side, and I've got a even with the um anti static bag, I've got some bits and bobs on here that really do need removing. See, I told you I'd had my grubby fingers all over it. I'll just take it off with a paintbrush. I'm sorry I'm tipping it, but it's the only way I can see where I'm at. Go in gently, Tracy. I think I've got them all. Yeah, that'll do. I'll leave it dangling off the edge so I can pick it up. Put this away. Because I don't want to drop what little I have left. I've got... Is everybody um, getting them little tiny black midgy things flying around? Oh, I've got loads of them and all. Right. Let's whip this out of the way as well. And a little noisy now while I uh, attempt to be here some bottom. I've got a little tiny bit of something on there. There you go. Hi Hazel. What a great show today. Thoroughly enjoyed them. I had to do them on catch up because I was uh, on Nana Juicy. <laughs> Towards me to see. Yep, that's it. That's it. Job done. 
Hi Lisa, hi Charlotte. Right, I do apologise for the pulse. It's okay, all, all I've done so far is matte and layered on the card and stamped out some heartfelt sunflowers. So I did get the other two done this afternoon, ready, already stamped. So now it's just up to the inking. And it's much the same as I did the other day, really. I'm going to use oxides for this. And I've got mustard seed and spice marmalade. Okay, because it's a nice, bright, cheerful card. So we're going to do some mustard seed in places. And then we're going to do some uh, spice marmalade in areas as well. Quite darkly. These are quite new, so it's all good. They're not too um, they're not too dry. I, I did say, you know, I'm going to start using them again. Well, using them for the first time because I do like the the distress inks. They're my faves. Let's be honest. So, just random patches for now. There's no great skill, to be fair. And it, it does dry to a, a, a chalky finish. So, that could be drying while we do the, the little flowers and all. So, I'll move that out of the way, put a dip the orange one in it. So... So now you're just filling in the gaps from your where you put the uh, yellow on. I do find these blend a little better. Or maybe it's just because they're juicier. I don't know, really. Maybe it's just because of that. Um, but they do blend quite nicely. So push that to one side. Just try not to get fingerprints in it, really. You don't want big fingerprints in it. Should have got a post-it note out and done Joe's trick, but well, that many bits and bobs around me in case of every event eventuality, in case something happens, <laughs> I've got hardly any space on my desk. So if you get like particular splodges that you don't like, just blend it in with either the yellow one um, again or the orange one. I keep taking it off with my fingers. There we are. There's two. It's a nice, bright, cheerful card, this one, isn't it? Hey. Has anybody got any questions? Distressing is just... It's dye-based in the dresser. Yeah, that's right, yeah. It, it, it's just a completely different finish. Plus, with the Distress Oxide, you can use it on black card and it shows up, which that doesn't happen if you use Distress Inks, obviously. And they sit on top of each other nicely, don't they? I mean, if you dry them in between, these sit on top too. So, as well as blending with each other, they will sit on top if you dry them. So, let's make sure there's no patchy patches. Look at the state of me. Right, I'm going to use this. To lean on. I don't want any patches, like definite patches, so I want it to look like it's been proper blended. There we are. Kind of got a square there. Mind you, you're not going to see that bit anyway. So I'll just move this off to one side again. Give it a wee minute to dry. Wipe my mucky paws. the yellow off because I'm bound sure to get it all over the place. Look how much was on my hands. It's not ridiculous. There we are. Right. So I'm just going to cheat and turn this over and I shall clean it later. I promise. So where are we up to? The flowers. Okay. So as you can see they've been heat embossed. Now these flowers, I don't want to do them in um, oxides. I want them to be in Distress Ink. So I've pulled out the same colours of Distress Ink 
that um, I've used with oxides, so it's mustard seed and um, spice marmalade. So I might paint them if there's enough juice in it because this is quite a, an old an old ink pad. So both of them I'm going to paint. Okay. And um, I've gone right up to the edge. I haven't given them a border so I can I can just kind of paint it willy nilly. If you, you know, well, you all know my kind of painting. It's not, it's not an exact science. I just throw it on. Well, you get messed up. I know when they first come out, it was like, oh, oh what do you use them for? I mean, you know, and I think that, I think that's why I didn't use them for a long time. I thought, oh no, I can't be bothered messing about. But to be honest, they're the juiciest ink pads that I've got now. Um, my distress inks are really. I need to. I've got some reinkers, but I need to get the rest of the reinkers for them. To be fair, um, so that you know, I can keep them topped up. But I've also got a full set of studio light ones as well. Um, but I bought them for for classes, so that I, I you know it was easier to take. So she picks the wrong one up. It was easier to take like just four little boxes with all the colours in for the girls to use than haul everything that I've got there, you know, ink wise. So they use them for the classes. They're handy. And the price points as well. They weren't using all my distress inks up um, in one go. Get a bit precious with your stuff, don't you? <laughs> I do anyway. Right, so. I've painted in that, and that took an extraordinary amount of time, really, for me. So what I'm going to do next is just uh, give it a quick flash dry. Again, don't like doing this in case it melts me, me and Boston, but I'm going to do it anyway. Hi, Vaughn. It's okay. You haven't missed much, doll. It's kind of the same as what I was doing the other day. You know the one we did a Z fold backwards, uh, the one I did the other night, Bob slightly different design obviously so that's okay and now I'm just gonna rub and see what happens with this orange one in the middle because I only want some orange in the middle as you can see that's pretty like it I might have to re-ink this one as well there we go I just want some in the middle of each one now my flower I want it to be dimensional so, in order to do that, what you have to do is decide which one you like the best, like them both. And these top petals here, you keep, and the ones underneath, you take out. Okay? It's not a difficult job. It's quite easy. You can see I'm just going to remove them. Take them down. Take them down right to the centre. And then that way, you're going to give yourself some room to manoeuvre them and give them a bit of dimension. If you cut dodgy like I've just done there, just round it off. Like that. You're just literally taking out the bottom parts of the petals. I love three-dimensional flowers on anything. I try my best to make them dimensional when it comes to this one where it doesn't go all the way down just follow it to the center with your scissors okay so you want it to be able to be moved seems a shame to butcher the flower doesn't it but it does add to it i think there we go last one So we've got that one now, and that is particularly badly cut. There we so now all we do, and we don't need to do much to it, is because it's got embossing on it, there's no point in getting your ball tool on it because all you'll do from that side is rub the embossing off if you press too hard. So you just kind of push it upwards. For somebody who likes fussy cutting, I've done it 
diabolical job on that bit. There you go. You see, you've got some there. And then we're going to glue it in the middle of there. And hope it glues together by the time we put everything else together. So, let it glue. Sometimes it's notoriously difficult to glue um, two things together that's been embossed. But we shall cross our fingers and hope for the best. There we go. And so now you can see you've got dimension on that flower. So pop it there to dry. And let's see where we're going next. Okay. I'm going to bring these back in because they should have semi-dried by now. And you can't really see the embossing on it because it's covered in yellow. So, an orange. So I'm going to hold on to it with a bit of tissue. And I'm going to buff up. And I hope you can see it coming up. Yeah, you can. I'm going to buff up that. I mean, you could use the uh, bleach method, faux bleach method. Take the colour out the middle of them so they would stand out really proud. Um, or you can, you know, faux bleach using the water. Or you could bleach it like Philippa showed you how to do with real bleach. All you want to do is bring the, the white back up. And you can see the difference in the two when you put them together. So, remove that from there, and you can you can actually be quite violent with it, can't you? There we go. A good scrub. Yep. There we go. Now we can pop these on. Any questions? No? No, no, no? No, no, no. Okay. And again, give yourself a little border. I use this to poke it down in case I put some grubby fingerprints on. I usually have a bit of acetase. I don't know where I put that. Any grubby fingers that you do put on, or if you, you can usually smooth it out. It means you'll have to go back in again over your flower, but it works for trees. There we are, one. Did I not trim that one? Yeah, I did. No, nope, I didn't. Super, didn't trim it. See? I think you're prepared and you're not. There we are. Before I glue it, did I trim this? No. Oh dear me. Okay, now I'm ready. These, I have to say, these are not colours I usually use. These are, I usually do pastel everything. This is quite bright for me. But I did kind of like how it turned out. Press it down. There we are. Okay, so we've got the panels on now. Um, and now, what we can do is put these on. I'm going to put this one on flat. This one's going to hold the sentiment. And this one... Will then, like we did before, it will fold across and sit halfway in exactly the same place. So this one's going on first, so we can line it up. Yeah. So this one we're going to put on the uh, end panel. And it's only going to roughly be halfway. So, if you pop it there, I'm just trying to line it up without standing up. There we go. So, we're looking at that one there. There. So, behind, on this side only, I'm going to put some double-sided tape. Foam tape, sorry. So, give it a gauge. Two bits. Should do it. Pick it up where you think it is, 
turn it over and pop it on. And you do want to see it from the other side and it's going to line up on there. So, oh, find the poker tool. And because you've got foam pads on it, you are able to pop things in and around behind it. So we've got this kind of thing going on like we did with the other one. It's just surprising, although it's the exact same card. Okay, it's a different shape. Uh, just using a different stamp and different colours, how completely different it looks. Am I going to be on every Monday? Uh, no. Um, I'm five, just had a message. Sorry, am I going to be on? No, I'm on every other Monday. Um, it, it was just because there was a, a, a launch last week that I, uh, I did an extra one. Listen, if I did every Monday, you'd all get fed up looking at me. <laughs> I'm just going to use the scruffy bit of card I've got here to ink these up. I don't want much on this. You could leave them white if you wanted to, but I'm just going to use, I think I'll use the Distress Ink uh, brush and just add a little bit on the edges. Not too much, just a bit. Um, so they do kind of pop a bit off. Sorry, I'm like, my granddaughters have guinea pig dramas. Oh, no. I hope they're all right. We had my granddaughter, I think I might have mentioned this on a previous live. Um, I bought her this, she loves butterflies like I do. And I bought her a thing called the Butterfly Garden. And it comes as a kit. And you, you send off when you're ready for your caterpillars. And they come through the post and you put them in the, the little garden and you literally watch them grow from caterpillars and then they go into a chrysalis and then they go into they turn into butterflies and you have to feed them for a couple of days in this net big big net and then you let them go and today was letting go and um, my granddaughter called she's six but every time she spoke to the butterflies or the crap the caterpillars they flap their wings, so she nicknamed them Flap Flaps. So today she let the Flap Flaps go. So I guess she's going to be either really sad or she's going to be really happy. But it was really cute to watch them. Um, I might put the photos on my page and then you can have a look at the, at the, at the outcome for it. No, and it was really cute. I thought it was a really nice gift. I would have loved one of them when I was little watching them grow and it's educational as well isn't it so uh, so I'm going to pop these underneath here now okay I'm just gonna kind of pop two in not that one these things have these um dies have got a left and a right way so I'm just going to pop these two in for now and the rest of them I'm going to put in when I've got my butterflies together so hazel's butterfly again but this time i've stamped them in orange in the uh, spice marmalade oxide okay and i'm gonna put some yellow just through the middle of them just on the little areas where the bodies are i am going to use a gem in the middle something sparkly might use a hard shaped glossy don't know yeah um we shall see so they're ready and literally Work where you're going to put them, and then you can put your um, you can put your foliage underneath it. Where's my pokey tool? Press it down. Here we go. Press it on with that. So I want another one of those. I do like a bit of foliage sticking out the sides. Pop it underneath. Okay. Let's get the ones the right way around. I want them to come downwards and to go upwards. So I don't think I need it to be as big as that. So don't be scared to chop any. Pull a bit off. And then you can pop it underneath. And just a little bit on this one going straight, I think. 
out. Yeah. And then this one, the whole of it, I think. Yeah, the whole of it can go under there. Maybe not. Maybe I have to take a bit off. Butchering flowers and leaves tonight. There we are. And then the rest of these can go on. Oh, did you see them, Julie? Yeah, really cute. Really super cute. I'm going to put one there. You all know I have this thing about butterflies always having to fly upwards. Strange person that I am. So now the flower can go on in the middle. Okay. So let's just glue it flat. There we are. Press it down. And I did put a big gem somewhere. Here it is. A white one. And that will sit in the middle. I'm probably going to have to put a bit of glue on it because although it's self-adhesive, it's going on to embossing powder that's been heat embossed. So one more butterfly and we're good. I'll put him there. Now, <clears throat> all we've got to do is the sentiment that's going on this side. Please dry and stay upright. There we are. Okay, so sentiment time. I'm going to use that one from Hazel Set and I've got a bit of card here ready for it and I'm going to stamp it in the orange oxide the same as the butterflies now hopefully that's straight yeah so pop that there pop that there pick it up I gave them all a good wash Oxide stamps quite well. Stamps better than Distress Ink anyway. Might need a couple of hits. Oh, that's come out okay first time, but I'll give it another go. So it's definitely legible because it is kind of bright in the orange. Miss the celebrate. Don't you I tell you what, I wish I was the person who invented a stamp platform, but they're amazing, aren't they? this so I'm not going to heat emboss it I'm just gonna use it as is I'll pop that up right and I've got an orange piece for us to sit on a mat as such okay there we are and now that's gonna sit across there now I just hope didn't do it too big because if I did I'll need to trim it no that's okay maybe a little trim look at me going in rogue with the old scissors I'm useless at cutting with scissors absolutely useless so why I'm pretending I'm good now I've no idea there we are. I just needed a fraction off because it was probably going to move it so I'm going to glue it on flat just put the glue on here don't want on any on either side. It's going to sit there and I'll press it down with my glossy packet because it's nice and clean. There we go. Now, this one I've put gems on. Okay, I'm not going to waste time putting gems on it. I might use, I think they're really cute, so I might use these. <gasps> Look at me using my good glossies up. Okay take them off I'm going to use the little hearts because that is super cute and there's hearts on the uh, sunflowers so that kind of ties in nicely oh yeah they're well cute I do love a glossy so last one on straight would be grand isn't it funny the way we get really like a perfect perfectionist towards the very last items we put on? It's got to be in the right place or it won't do. So there you go. There we are, two. I'm not going to gem this one up. You can see it. No problem. So I'll move that out of the way now. Yeah, I'm happy with that. 
just think of all the colour ways you could do that in because if you did it, if you did the flower, the sunflower, in a different colour, it would just look like a different flower. It's only because I think we've I've done it in orange that it, you know, and said it's a sunflower. But I think you could get away with that in pinks and blues and any colour you wanted. Right? I'm just gonna give this a wipe down because I don't want to get any yellow on my next card. <laughs> that might happen anyway because it's all over my hands but we can live in hope we can live in hope right that's that done i don't know so this one was a bit of an ad hoc this afternoon while i was sitting thinking you know well my lives don't take very long because i do prep too much and if i do prep too much ladies can somebody please give me a nudge but I just think, well, you know, people do know. I've done a bit of stamping. People know how to stamp and all. I think it's more how to put the cards together, really. Well, that's all what I always want to know, anyway. Right, let's see what we've got. Okay, let's see what we're using. Again, I'm using um, Hazel's Butterfly because I love it. Um, and again, it's a DL card. But this time I'm using Philippa Stencil. I already have Hazel's Butterfly, the big one, and a couple of little ones, and a couple of the little ones again. I don't know which ones I'm going to use just now, but so I did them all. I've got some um, Tootsie Fruity Glossies, because these are the colours that I'm kind of going for. Um, and this time I'm using Stormy Sky and Villainous Potion. I'm also not sure which of these I'm going to use. So it could be happy birthday or it could be have the best day ever. I don't know. I don't know. But we'll go. And the happy birthday, of course, came from the Assorted Sentiments die cut foilables. I'm not going to foil it. I want it black and white. So, again, you don't have to foil them. They're just really handy sentiments, aren't they? To be fair. Versatile handy sentiments. Right, and I think I might use, see I've not really prepped the design I'm going to do, I've just prepped the colours and the shape of the card. I think I might use this. Um, it's not going to be a Christmas card, it's going to be a messy card, especially for Yvonne, who says she can't do puddles. Okay, I just want to show about how easy it is and don't be scared of doing a puddle, because if you think it's a puddle, somebody else will think it's their best artistic card you and wonder how on earth you did it when really it's took no effort whatsoever so let's get some space so i'm not folding it i'm just going to go in as is so i've got a black layer because i'm going to be using black ink as well so i'm going to put my black layer on black matte and layer again a four by eight card and this is just slightly smaller as a as a matte layer just eyeball it see if you've got the right amount around it and I'm going with pear lilac this time not blue you'll see why when I do the splat snow okay so I'll put that on and so I've only got a real tiny black border around it I have two bags I foiled them all and the others I've left yeah yes yeah, it's, it's a good plan foil them all in different colors and then you've always got them ready isn't it yeah Sometimes when you need to craft but you haven't got an idea in your head what you're going to do, it's a good plan to go in and do things like that because then you're uh, then you're all organised for when you do need to go and craft and you don't have to sit and mess about with foils and things. It's already done for you. Yeah, that's a good plan. Let's have a go at that this next couple of days. So now I've got a layer on top and this is mixed media card paper. It's um, the one I usually use. Um because it takes a lot of ink. That's going to go on there. So let's see. Here we go. I've got a spray bottle knocking about somewhere here. And uh, and I've got some tissue to dab off the mess that I don't want. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little bit down. I don't want this bit too dark. Where I've gone really bright on the last one, I'm not going bright on this one. Even though the darkish colours, as you can see, um, we will be muting them down a lot. See Yvonne? Just whap it on and spread it out. Okay. 
anything you don't want. Any big puddles you don't want, because I don't really want big puddles. I want this. It's a background. I want it gentle. Okay. See, Dark Villainous Potion has been muted down to quite pale. Now, give it a little dry. Because I'm going to go in with a bit of Stormy Sky now. Only a little bit though. So I just need it dry enough. be able to go on top. Now I did ink this stormy sky up before so I'm not sure how much is, oh it's not too bad. So I don't want it to be straight lines like that so often I'll put a little bit of water on and just smoosh it about and see what I get. This is quite a thick piece of acetate so it's coming up quite um, blobby if you know what I mean. Kind of blobbing it, little blobs. Don't want too much of this at this point because the colours that I'm going to put on the top, mostly blue. So although there's a little bit of blue in the background, I'm going to put blue on with the stencil. Okay. Oh yeah, good plan. I haven't had a holiday in ages. I'm not a fan of holidays, I miss my house. But we used to go away three, four times a year. I used to do cruise, you know, do a cruise. Um, I've been most places that I want to go to, really. But there is a few on my bucket list, I have to say. So now I'm going to put Philip a stencil on, I think. No, I think I'll do, I'll do, don't you just love it when a plan isn't done? I'm going to put some of these on. Do I do the big one or do the small one? I think I'll do the big one. Um, yeah. It's just a different way of using the stamps. And in no way do they resemble Christmas trees once you're finished. They're just a really good mixed media stamp, I feel. Um, I'm going to pop it. I'm not even measuring it. Going in rogue. I'm going to put one there. I'm going to turn it round. Wipe off that mess, Tracy because you will put it all over your card. There we go. I'm going to kind of eyeball it so it's roughly opposite. It doesn't have to be dead straight. It's mixed media. So we've got that. Okay. You're probably thinking, what on earth is that one doing? What is she doing? It is a plan, sort of. Well, yeah, ish. I'm going to put one here and one there and I'm going to turn it around and again I'm going to try and line them up it doesn't matter if it doesn't and one there okay so it's right there put my stamp back it's a precious one okay now, I'm going to go in with Philippa's stencil and I'm going to use the Stormy Sky and I'm going to go through it with the blue. Now, like I said, I don't know how deep this is going to be. I don't want it particularly deep to start with anyway. Uh, yeah, that'll do. I'm just going to go in. You can always put more on, but you kind of take it away. Well, you can take it away with a bit of water, but, you know, it's best to go in gentle to start with, at least... So lift it up and now I need to come over this side a bit. It doesn't matter whether you do half ones but I do want a little bit of something there and here. Let's see, have a look at it. Yeah, quite like that. I'm just going to put one at the bottom here. There we go. Yep, yeah, that'll do. And now for mess time, messing about time, which is my favourite bit. These I'm going to join up, okay, I'm just going to use a fine liner and I'm just going to head up in the general direction where I'm going to do two lines so they're wobbly and they're meant to look wobbly. I'm going to do the same with this one and the same with this one and that one. 
doesn't line up in any way shape or form but that doesn't matter because what I'm going to do is just draw a little squiggle so it looks like it was meant to do just that okay got three and now I'm going to add a little bit more to the background so bring in the two inks that we've been using um what are the what other stamps am I going to use right I think I'll use the butterfly ones and use the word in and all those bits to add some interest into the background. So I'm going to use this, which is says butterfly. First off, I'm going to dip it in the purple. I'm not using a stamp platform or anything. I want it to be, and I don't mind which bits get stamped and which bits don't get stamped. I'll move I'll do this side now because I don't want it to be exactly the same all over there we are so it's got a little bit of interest I hope you can see that it looks well dodgy there doesn't it <laughs> that's fine um and I'll use this one as well but again I will pick this one up with the with a, one of them. I find it quicker to use these when you're doing this kind of card to use this kind of thing just an acrylic block because otherwise you'd be repositioning all over the place um, so I'm going to add some there some down here you're just basically building up a background you know yeah we'll do them um, what else am I going to use I need a bit of black in it, I think, but not too much. So I am going to put black doodly around the outside. Doodly line. Let's take a little bit of that off. Don't want it too dark. Using the same. Just using the fly word, really, from the top. And if you misjudge, put it back in. Okay. And what else do we need? Just do round the outside for now and see how that looks. You can always add a bit more at the end. So maybe that's all I do need. The standard doodly line. Once you've committed, keep going. Might need a bit more stenciling. But I do kind of like a clean as you know a clean even though it's messy I don't like it too cluttered the background so so there's the line because we've got them squiggles there put some squiggles in add some squiggles wherever you want there's no real skill involved with squiggling there we go and now I'm going to work on the butterfly, so let's cover these ink, this black ink up at least. So, standard Tracy method of colouring. I think I'll go with purple in the middle, blue on the outside. Yeah, why not? Okay, I'll shout where the other brush has gone. Oh, there it is. Okay, purple. Let's I've actually left the antennae on this one. I usually cut it off. <laughs> but I managed to do it. Watch me rip it off now while I'm inking. I'm putting dark purple in the middle. Okay. And so, so eking it out to the side, as you can see. And uh, and then I'm going to go in with the blue. And then I'm going to finish off with a bit of purple on the outside think but only what's left on my brush I'll come in from the sides so it's get it's got a bit of everything on it purple then blue then purple maybe need a bit more yeah I'll do so I'm going to do the same with the uh, the others till I decide which one I'm going to use so we want the purple in the middle yep purple in the middle this one's not too big, so I'm just going to go with blue on the outside, but make it a little darker. And 
out. Oh, I'm liking these colours. Very pretty. <clears throat> there we are. So now he or she or this flap flap is going to sit on there. Yeah. I think I'll put it straight down the middle of that one. So it really didn't matter that this was quite uh, wobbly. It's just a bit of interest in the background. Is it not? And then I'm going to put them on. And do you know what? I'm quite happy that that has got enough on it. I know it's a lovely butterfly, isn't it? But if you think about it, you could do this with the dragonflies as well. You know, do the exact same card. Different colours. Use the dragonfly. And uh, and it would be different again. You could make lots of these. So, bend its wings. And decide where you're going to put the other two. Or do you need a small one? And a larger one or do you just need two small ones <laughs> here we go here she goes with the faffing okay let's color now it needs to be purple this one half and half how do you get so messy there we are look at the statement right okay and we've got um we've got the banner and we've got happy birthday, right? Now, the banner, I feel, is a little wide, okay? So, in this instance, I'm going to trim off the points, okay? Trim off the point. And then because we've got that doodly edge around the outside, I'm going to join that line up and make it a sec give it a second line. And then I'm going to give this a second line. I hope you can see. I'm just going to go around it again with the second line. And put a few squiggles on it. So it now matches the outside edge. Okay. Can you see that? So it now matches the outside of the edge. And it's a little shorter now. So it works fine. So I think I might pop it there. Just to see if I can live with it there or not. And then we've got, does the big one belong up there? Oh, come on, make me a decision. I love your clean mixed media. Oh, I've got to have some white space, Julie, yeah. Otherwise, I get, I get a bit freaked out by colour. I love colour on everybody else's work. But sometimes, the colour on my own, I, I just don't kind of like it. That's why I had so, you know, so many people go, oh, that's a bit bright for you, when I did the orange and the yellow one. Because they're like, oh, Tracy's doing our bright. No, it lives there. It needs to live there. And I need to do the three of them on there. There we go. And that one needs always flying upwards. There we go. You could colour the, the trees, if you wish. The non-Christmas Christmas trees. And I think I am going to use this one. Let's just see what happy birthday looks like. You could use either of those, couldn't you? But no, I'm going to use this banner seeing as I've done it. Okay. Should I colour the banner? Or should I leave it? Let's ombre it up. I probably made a bad decision in ombreing it up. But there we are. We're going with it. On the bottom. What can I lean on? So I don't get my mucky paws all over it. A little bit from the bottom. Still get some mucky pores on it. I've got a bit of blue from the top. So it now matches the butterflies. I'm going to put a sticky on the back. Grab one out. Don't need to trim it in half. Hi Maxine. It's alright doll. You can watch it back. We, we save them all. Hopefully. Facebook plays nice and we can save them all. There we are. So let's put this one together. Well, basically, you've just got to glue it on here, haven't I? So instantly, when you put it on that lilac from behind, it pops right off the page. Right off. There we are. Look at that. 
for popping off. There we go. Now we can put the sentiment on. Thanks, Jules. I'm looking at it on the screen and I don't know whether these need to be coloured in. Have the best day ever. You could go across there. You could put a key down its body. Make a proper mixed media. In the middle or at the bottom? Which way? <laughs> Come on, you choose. Oh, I don't want to put it across the butterfly. The butterfly is too pretty. I'm going to pop it there. There we are. And let's give, seeing as we're in the heart mood, and we're being very generous with the glossies, let's give the little ones a heart in the middle. There we are. So, not using too many stamps, not too much effort. And there you go. Look at the mess. Right, let's move all this mess. Bring in what we did make. Now one last look before I finish up. There we are. One's with the heart on, wasn't it? There we go. So, we made that one and that one. There you go then. So I hope you enjoyed that. A little cheeky second one, especially for Yvonne. Um, with Muddy Puddles. I think they'll forever be known as Muddy Puddles now, like Peppa Pig. Eh? So, thank you for joining me. Um, all of the stamps that I've used, obviously, you'll find the links to at the top of Julie um, Julie Hickey's page, this, this one that we're on. All the stockists are at the top. Uh, any questions you have, text me, whatever. If you didn't want to put them on here, just give us a shout. Um, I'll always help you if I can. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for joining me. Okay. Goodbye.